Welcome to this week's piece. This is actually a lovely little set of nightstands that a client brought to me. She had previously bought another piece of mine and wanted these to be done to match. Now I did warn her that the tops were most likely laminate so I couldn't get an exact duplicate. Mind you, I expressed that I don't do duplicates anyways because all of my stuff is painted by hand obviously, but um, stuff for the tops I can generally get pretty close. Not with these because, of course, I couldn't stain these or anything like that. So I'll show you later what we end up doing with that. But they did turn out to be laminate. The rest of them, um, she wanted the super layered, kind of grungy, textured vibe. Um, it did match the other piece, so it worked out perfectly. I didn't have to strip the body of these back. We wanted that... Um, all the old brush strokes in there and the layers and all that stuff so these kind of really they're just so easy and lovely because they're just you're just painting over the top um, when you do that you do have to make sure that you prep really well though so these handles she's like I do not want those pink handles and lucky for us when I went to strip these back this is just stripper um, they turned out to be beautiful so I didn't even have to really do anything to these I just cleaned them up and they turned out awesome so I did this in a pretty quick time lapse because I think that's just fun to watch but you can see the stripper like activates with the pink and makes it turn blue and I just really it came off so easily I just used the chip brush that I was using and just scrubbed them up and then went back in with mineral spirits and they're just like I said lovely I did end up using a wire brush on some parts just to shine them up because they need a little sprucing. So now for the top, I have these two paint colors. It is dark khaki and medium khaki. And I'm literally just going to brush these together to give me the base that I kind of had on the other top. Um, I'm just trying to mimic the the under layer of wood coloring. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to have crazy grain lines or anything like that because there's going to be additional steps to this, but I needed something of similar consistency color-wise so that I could at least get something close to what she has. Um, she, was, she was very sad about the laminate tops and she didn't want to invest in additional tops. So we are working within a range and we needed to make sure that we could stick with that. So that's all stuff you have to think about. I know I don't usually talk about um, the clients that I do and I definitely don't talk about money because I don't, my clients don't like that, but that's just stuff that you should be talking about with your clients, like what they're willing to invest as you're going along because inevitably you will find something that you're going to have to spend more money on or more time on, which of course costs more money yada yada okay so as you can see I started with the lighter color and then I'm just going in and streaking through some of the darker and like I said I'm not worried about getting grain lines I just want some kind of lines going back and forth to mimic not be perfect if you do want somebody who does like legit faux grain work you guys should check out Jen from Copper Cactus DIY. That girl, oh man, she does some wicked grain work. Now I know this is pretty hard to see because the light is shining on it and it's wet, but in this shot you can kind of get a little better when it's not blurry. <laughs> Good grief. Um, yeah, the light's reflecting off the wet paint, so it's hard to tell, but you can kind of see the striations in there. And then we wanted to clean up the drawer side. She wanted natural wood everywhere on the inside of the drawer, so that's perfect. Those just got sanded back and then waxed, as you do. And then the entire piece got scuff sanded to make sure that the paint would adhere properly and it would all work out well. So after doing that, the top was of course dry enough to be able to throw these stencils on. Um, these were a must. 
that is kind of a hint here. These were a must to go on these. This was one of the things that she absolutely wanted on this, which was why she was so sad about the tops working, but it's fine. We did scuff up the laminate really, really well to make sure that the paint would stick on. So they'll be fine. We were just mostly concerned about the end result, how it would end up looking. And then once the stencils dried, I just went in with the same brush and just did a little dry brushing with the same white color. This is Devonshire Cream, in case you're curious. Obviously from Chalk Mountain, as I am a brand ambassador for them. I'm sure everyone knows that by now, but... So to do this dry brushing, like I said, I'm just... I left what was on the brush from doing the stencils and then I will mist a little bit of water. It's not going to matter so much again later on. There's a whole other couple of steps to go on these tops too. So layers and layers and layers and all that jazz. And then of course, real quick by hand, I had to use my sanding sponge to go through all the little detailed spots just to make sure that those got a good scuff sand before we start. And then once the tops dried for this portion, I just sealed this in with poly so that I can add an extra step. We're gonna do a wash next. So I'm just sealing this in to make sure that the wash doesn't reactivate all of this paint as it is on laminate. I'm just trying to get everything sealed in as best as possible. Um, this did get two coats of poly during this step here. And you'll see me bounce back and forth between things because I am impatient and like to be working while I'm waiting for other things to dry. So if you're wondering why it's bouncing back and forth, it's because that's how I work. As I said, I'm doing a wash over this portion. The poly has been set up overnight, so I'm not reactivating anything. Everything underneath is sealed in. And instead of mixing up a wash, since this, these are just very small areas I'm working on, all I did was spray the tops of these, saturate my brush with water, and then I barely dipped it into the steel color and just did the wash that way instead of mixing up paint with water. I'll do that when I'm doing larger surfaces, but for small areas like these, it's just kind of silly because I can just spray water everywhere, make sure my brush is wet and it has the exact same effect. And then again, I'm just keep keeping that brush stroke all going the exact same direction on every part of this because again, I'm trying to mimic the wood on the previous piece. Now what was awesome about these is that they were already white. So I didn't have to do a lot of covering or anything like that. Um, I literally did this one base layer of the Devonshire cream. And it's funny how yellow this looks, like that creamy yellow color over the white. But when you have the white completely gone, it doesn't look yellowy at all. It's so funny, but I love how, how colors do that. Anyways, I'm working in sections. I'm doing these sides here. And then what I do when I'm doing nightstands like this is I will kind of, they're not done the exact same. They're done kind of mirrored to each other. So I already have the first one done and then I have that for reference as I'm doing this one so that they kind of, they would be aesthetically pleasing on either side of a bed, if you know what I mean. So I can kind of look at the first one for reference and doing this one. And as you know, when I am doing these kind of messy, crazy blends like this, I like to have that base color of, in this case, it's the Devonshire cream, um, and it helps the other colors blend together. I don't want these to be a super, super smooth blend. Like this is supposed to be kind of that messy, grungy, even though they're bright, happy colors, you want to still be able to kind of like see those brush strokes and the kind of storminess that lives inside these kind of pieces. So that's the look that we're going for. But as they're being blended into the white color, they soften out and it just, 
it just looks so lovely. So if you want a perfect, pristine, super smooth blend, this is not it. This is that kind of crazy, colorful, but soft, kind of that watercolory feel that I'm going for with this one. Um, and again, I'm using the same colors as I did on the original piece. Thankfully, you guys, YouTube is so magical and that because I don't take notes on any of my stuff. I literally just go back to the video and watch it and I'm like, great, I can do that again on this. So I'm really thankful for that because I wouldn't even have remembered what, it, I have so many different blues and greens. I'd be like, uh, I don't know, maybe this was the blue that I used, but it's not like I have the exact colors that I need when I go to my YouTube videos. So I'm really thankful for that. Okay, anyways, back into this. You can see Messy Blend. I'm just using, I don't have a clean blending brush here. I'm using the, I have a color for, a brush for each color and I am just working them into each other until I love the way that it looks. You can see it's very stormy looking, very swirly um, and not perfect, but still beautiful. And then the same thing goes for the front. I'm just adding that base layer down and then I'm using the other piece for reference. So we're gonna speed through this because it's the exact same process. I'm just laying this color down, blending the other colors into it, into each other, and kind of not making it too matchy-matchy with the first one, but you know, getting the colors close so that you're happy when you look at them together in a room on either side of a bed. I do always make sure to pull my drawers out and then with the brushes already muddied up, I do not redip them in paint, but I will use those brushes to get the similar color around the edges and the tops. And then I'm going to seal the entirety of this in poly. Now back to the tops, I'm just taking some of the white wax and I'm going to white wax these. That's going to tone everything together again, give it more of that watery look that I'm going for and give it quite a bit of extra protection. Anytime I can on the tops of things, I always seal with poly and then add wax as well. So I know there was another wash layered in between here, but it just having poly and wax is just it's the best way to protect the tops of your pieces, especially things like nightstands where people just can't be trusted. Now, once the tops have 
completely absorbed the wax, I will go back in and wipe it back. And since the poly is dry as well, I can go ahead and add in the hardware. What I thought was amusing about this hardware is only one of them still had the original screws. All of the other pieces of hardware were just shoved into the holes and the paint was so thick in there that they stayed in even when you open the drawers. So I had to go to the hardware store and find matching screws for these, but that's fine. I bought several extra because these are the ones I use the most. All these vintage hardware generally take that size screw. Now for the finishing touches, I'm going to go ahead and use some gilding wax because uh, I love it. And again, this matched the other piece. So I'm just creating some stripes on these front panels. Um, I'll throw a few on the sides as well, and then I'm doing all the high points with the antique gold rub and buff. Um, I did use a little bit of this on the hardware itself just to kind of tone them to match the same gold so that they weren't terribly different. And then that's it. I mean, probably this part took the longest because I went through and did all the lines and everything and all the detailed parts of the gold, so... This was an easy, easy set to do, and I loved every minute of it. These were just a joy to work on. Oh, hi, Taryn and Lucas here with Elegant Upgrades, and we've got our finished pieces. So this is just the most darling set of nightstands ever. I'm pretty sure it used to be a vanity because that's typically what these guys are. And there were some things while I was finishing it up that made me suspect that as well. Um, it is very kind of that cottage, a little bit grungy feel to match an existing piece that I've already done because this was um, given to me by a client who purchased a previous piece from me and wanted matching nightstands to go with it. So I thought it would be really fun since the old piece that I did a couple, a couple videos ago, um, I couldn't use the decoupage paper that I had printed out from Zazzle. They come in two sheets. These were too large for the piece that I was using. So I ended up printing it on my own anyways. So I have two of these extra that I'm not going to use. So I thought it would be fun if you guys could guess what piece these match with and go to, then I will select two winners to get one of those decoupage papers. If you want to, I know it's kind of a, a strange with a girl sleeping on a bear, very fairy tale, whimsical. Um, not everybody's cup of tea, but if it is your cup of tea and you can guess what these match with, what piece we did previously, um, I will send those to two people. It's just gonna be a random drawing of all the people who guessed correctly. So if you want to win, then you just have to be over 18, leave what piece you think it is and um, be in the United States because that's where I can ship to. Uh, yeah, so just thank you guys so much all the time, always for everything that you do for liking and sharing and for subscribing to my channel. I just, I can't tell you how much I really appreciate you all. You're incredible humans. Just thank you so much. You let me do this and be with my kid and I just think that's wonderful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll get you some photos of this and I'll see you guys next week.